we're going to be doing some calculations down into the nanoseconds. So just to make sure we get everything right, I've got Elvis running the supercomputer today. Hey, what's happening guys? Today I've got a quick lesson for you on propagation delay. That is the time it takes for a signal to be processed through an IC. In this case, there are other types of propagation delay, but that's the type we're talking about today. And the IC we're using here is a 74HC04. Who knows what that is? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? It's a hex inverter. So it's being powered with five volts. All the unused inputs are pulled to ground. And we're going to use just the first inverter there. Pin 1 is the input. Pin 2 is the output. Pin 1 is unconnected, or you know we can connect it to ground, like so. So it is getting a low signal. Oops, come on, get in there. Pin 2 is the output, and it is that blue LED, and it is getting a high signal because pin 1 is low. The inverter simply flips it, so the other side is high. So if I connect pin 1 to 5 volts, it's now high, and pin 2 goes low. That's really all there is to it. So what I've done here is I've connected the oscilloscope probes, this one to the input, this one to the output. This is channel 1, this is channel 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up the oscilloscope in single shot mode. You can see it says ready. We'll zoom in here, I'm going to get you a good view. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to briefly uh, put pin 1 high. That wasn't briefly enough. My finger got stuck. There we go. Now, if we move this, you can see right there. That's as far in as I can get. Where channel one, channel one is, what color is channel one? I can't remember. Okay, channel one is the blue. So it goes high and the other one goes low. Now, let's measure the difference in time. Are you ready, Elvis? Ready, boss. So I'm going to bring up the cursor and we're going to use time. And let's see which one we move in here. Okay, that's the second one. There's the first one. So we're going to put it right where that guy starts to move up. And then we're going to put this one right where it starts to move down. Which is right about there. And if you look right there, you can see the delta T, the difference in time, of 2.6 nanoseconds. And that is the propagation delay through that IC. Let's, uh, let's do it again. I mean, I'm doing this by hand. So if you had a pulse generator, it would be equal probably every time. But we're not. We just have me. So there we go. All right, let's find our... <laughs> Hell did it fire. Let's turn this off first. Now we'll reset. We'll do this again. And make sure that we have our horizontal position right there. I think that was my problem. All right, one, two, three, boink. Now, perhaps I need to zoom in more like that. Let's try again. There we go. So now, now we can zoom in and you get a better view of that propagation delay. So we'll move the blue, remember blue is channel one. So there's where it starts to move. Yellow is channel two. And it starts to move right about there. That time we got a four nanosecond delay. Let's do one more test. 
and we'll do an average. Zoom in here. Yellow appears. Start moving about there. Blue appears to start moving about there. Again, we got two negative seconds. So we had four, we had two, two, and four. That gives us an average of 2.66 repeating nanosecond propagation delay through this particular IC with this particular setup. Is this important? In most cases, you know, when you're playing around the home with Arduinos and little ICs like this, no, it's not going to make any difference to you whatsoever. But if you're like a radio guy or something, and you're playing around with high frequencies, well, then it does make a difference. Because if you can't take a look here at the scope window, once again, that measurement window, you're seeing our period, which is uh, one divided by the time. Well, that's our period. Um, that frequency, which is one divided by the time, is actually 500, me 500 megahertz. So that can be different ICs are going to have different propagation delays, and they're going to depend on a number of things, including the temperature, the voltage, and the load. Look at your data sheets. That's where you're going to find what the typical propagation delay for your particular IC is going to be. All right. I hope you liked this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. We're at almost 95,000 viewers. Uh, there'll be a link down below where you can sign up for the 100,000 subscriber giveaway. That's it. I'm out. Peace.